Hey Kimberbellas, it is the first day of autumn. So it's time to start on our Boulevard, Twilight Boulevard Bench Pillow by Kimberbell. So this is the CD, you'll need this to get started. Um, and a couple things. So your main fabric, I'll put all the cut directions in the video. Um, back it with fusible mesh stabilizer or SF 101 or, or whatever that's going to give it extra stability. And then gather your other supplies. So one is that we need our, from our embellishment kit, our orange glitter for the pumpkin. And you want to take the top off of it. Make sure to peel back that first layer. And then the gold, sorry, this side, uh, the gold mylar and the iridescent mylar. So we're going to use that for the first block. So our challenge today is the very first block. If I recall, it's called uh, Welcome to the Boulevard. Um, that's the first one we're going to work on. And a lot of it is the same as the tutorials that we've done in the past, but not all of it. So make sure to pay attention. The reason is because of the cut directions. So we have very specific cut directions, which means that we need to move around our fabric um, or at least our design to be able to get it in the cut line or the stitch line really anyway um so i'm gonna go over all of that so one thing is i've decided i'm going to do uh the kimberbell quilting uh different on each block so do what works for you this is your pillow um you could do one overall scene on each block um, I've chosen to do a different one on each one. I've been seeing the pictures in the group and the one, I, I like all of them, but the ones that, um, have different quilting designs on each block, I think that that looks fun. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to use a gray thread. It's the one that's in the Broomhilda, um, thread kit, but keep in mind something really fun would be a glow in the dark thread. Um, I was going to do that and then I thought well with the tutorial that's not really very fair to you guys because you're not going to see it very well and I want something that's going to stand out so that you can see what I'm doing and, and showing you how to do it. Um, but anyway that's something to consider. So um, before you ask this is called Luminary. Um, I think it was a uh, version of the glide but not glide I don't recall exactly I'll, I'll try and find some information and put that on um, a post if you decide to do glow in the dark thread um, I think that's it so I will do um, one challenge a day is what I'm hoping for keep in mind I'm also working on Brimhilda at the same time so um, help out if you see someone with questions help them um, help answer those questions if you can so that i can take the time for stitching and now someone's at my door and <laughs> my dogs are barking hold on i'm back sorry about that um so what i was saying is if you have questions go ahead and ask them but um for everyone that's doing this there's a ton of people doing it and a ton are newbies which is so fun um so Everyone help each other. I am not going to be offended if you're answering questions on my posts that will help me to give me time for stitching. So um, please do that. Um, and like I said, one challenge a day. It should be very doable. And I will go over as much of it as I possibly can. And if I leave anything out, just let me know. And let's do this. Okay, Bella. So we're going to start with our mean fabric at 6.5 by 10.5 our main fabric but our cut size our final cut size is four and a half by eight and a half and that's how we determine our quilting so think about if um, we want our block filled up but not so much that it fills up our main fabric since we're going to cut it down we wouldn't want um, our batting and our seams we wouldn't want all that excess fabric so we go by the final cut size so if our final cut size is four and a half by eight and a half then we want our quilting design to be the four by eight and that gives us our seam allowance that half inch so it's a quarter inch on each end all right I am using the quilting stars as my first quilting design it's by Kimberbell you can get it at mykimberbell.com 
um, and then go to the quilting. So this is the one that I've chosen. Like I said, you can use any of them. So a couple quick things is you can merge your design together like this so that you can see what it's going to look like and it's just an easy stitch out. Um, if you don't have embroidery software to merge them, I'm going to show you how to do them separately. So here's our applique design. It's really more of an embroidery design on this one. Well, it is applique because of the pumpkin. Um, anyway, and then there's the quilting design. So we're going to obviously start with our quilting design and then we'll do the embroidery on top. But like I said, if you have embroidery software, you can merge the two. But the outcome is the same. It doesn't matter how you do it. Um, so I recommend Cutaway, um, and Kimberbell recommends Cutaway for designs that are um, more dense. I actually am out of Cutaway right now, so I have Tearaway in my hoop, and then I've added another layer of Tearaway underneath my hoop um, just for extra stability. I need to make some time to get to the store to get some more Cutaway stabilizer, but um, that would be my recommendation because this is mostly an embroidery design, so it's going to be um, pretty dense. So a cutaway would be good. All right, uh, did I go over everything? Don't forget your batting. All right, I usually just cut my batting the same or a little bit smaller than my main fabric. There's a whole um, guide in your Kimberbell quilting of what size batting you need. You could go by that or just cut it a little bit smaller than your main fabric. That's pretty easy. Um, I use warm and natural batting, but any of them work fine. And then as I mentioned earlier, I always back my main fabric with um, SF 101 or mesh stable, fusible mesh stabilizer. All right, um, I think that's it for now. Let's get started. As I mentioned, I'm going to do these separately just for those that are going to do that separately. The big thing is that we want to move our design down so that we have a lot of quilting up at the top of the design and that the, um, the little flower and the stem of this um, post is going to be right at our uh, what do you call it the the bottom of the design and we'll go through all of that but um, that's the big thing so you can see on this design I went ahead and I did it using my software um, here let me so if you're going to merge the two the big thing is that you want to make sure that your um, post and the stem of your flower are right at the bottom at, at your cut line basically um, so you can see this is your batting line and then this is our main fabric line so you just want it down at the bottom it doesn't have to be perfect but you just want it down at the bottom and it's easy to to move the file down if you were to just merge the two then this lamp is going to be in the middle and you'll have very little quilting up here and you'll have a big open space at the bottom that you don't want so, or you'd have, you would cut it correctly and then have batting in your seam. So it's very easy to just move it down in embroidery software. I'm going to show you how to do it separately for those that aren't going to do it that way. All right. So we always start with our quilting. So choose your quilting design and hit set or go or whatever your machine tells you to do. And it's going to automatically center that in the middle of your hoop, so it's all good. Um, our first step is always a batting placement, batting tack down, um, main fabric placement, main fabric tack down, and then our quilting design. So we're going to go ahead and start with that. One thing also to mention is if you choose the spiders or the the Halloween lines, you'll notice that, and it was mentioned in the group, that the lines will go past this, um, this first box here. And that's okay. That does not mean that you're going to have batting in your seams because as you can see, this first box is our batting box and the second box is our main fabric. So when the stitching comes over the the 
first box, we've already cut our batting away. So it doesn't matter at all. What it's doing is it's giving us a nice seamless look that it goes into the seams. So um, don't be concerned if you choose one of those that have the um, the design going off the edge. You, you want that on those designs. This first one, the stars, it's all inside of this first box. So it doesn't matter. But I wanted to mention it for those that are choosing a different design for their first block. All right. So we have stitched our placement line for our batting directly on our stabilizer. And you're just gonna take your batting and completely cover that box on, on all parts. Get under your foot, hard to do with one hand. Um, and just make sure that the, the box is all covered. And then we're gonna um, tack down that batting. Um, the rest of this tutorial I should be able to do in photos. But again, if you have any questions or if I miss anything, just let me know. Isn't that so pretty? Oh my gosh. Every time I use one of these new Kimberbell designs, I just, it makes me happy. So, all right. The key thing here is once you finish this part, leave it hooped. Do not unhoop. Do not um, change anything. Leave it as is. All right. And then you're going to go back to your machine. Everyone is different, but for me, I go back to home and then I'm going to load the embroidery design. You could, like I said, do it on in embroidery software and merge the two, or you can use your edit screen and merge them that way. I'm doing it as simple as possible, quilting design and then embroidery design um, so that you can see how simple this is. All right. So click set and embroider. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this. So if, I'll show you what it looks like. So on my machine, I have this button that shows me what, what it looks like. So from here, see that little green arrow that shows that it's showing this part of the screen. I want it to show down here so that I know where the placement is. So I would just use this button here, um, down and it moves the design to where it's going to be. Sorry, you can see right here. See this little, um, this little green arrow showing us the bottom of the screen, or, or the bottom of the design. So you can see that the bottom of the design is going to. Um, I'll put my foot down. It's going to stitch here, but we want it a little bit lower. We want it um, above our seam line. So if you feel around, you can feel that the batting ends here. The other way to tell is just by where the quilting ends, right? That's a nice, easy way. So we want our design, this design, to be a little bit lower so that we have all of our quilting up here at the top and then when our final cut, it's gonna be at the bottom. All right, so we're gonna just move this down. So to do that, you use, let's see, this is okay, um, edit. So go up here to edit or wherever it is on your machine and then move where I'm going to move the design and then I have a different set of buttons and it's going to bring the design down. So I'll show you over here while I click that down button, it moves where, where my foot goes so that it shows me where um, it's going to start my design. So again, I'm just feeling or looking at where the bottom of the quilting design is. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If you're a super perfectionist, go for it. Um, whatever works. But bottom line is we're going to just get it toward the end of our batting, toward the end of our quilting design. All right. And then what you can do is go back go out of edit, go back to that one that moves our foot around and shows us. And I'm going to use these bottom 
design bottom buttons down here to just see where the placement is so see i can see that i'm right at the end of my quilting there that works for me that makes me happy you can keep working at it if you want but this looks like pretty good placement to me i'm pretty happy about it i can feel that my batting ends right here so it's all good all right so then go back to the middle and you can see and then the top so look at the top of our placement is here and look see we still have quilting up there it's really perfect so in the directions if you look at your directions it tells you to fold your fabric in half make a one inch I don't remember all the details but full do a fold one inch all of that we don't have to do any of that because we've already got our fabric already all lined up just right because we did quilting. So if you're not quilting as you go, then you would need to obviously follow those directions. But for us, we're just gonna move our design down to the bottom of our quilting and go from there. Pretty easy, right? Let's do it. I thought of a really good way to give you a visual. So as you can see here, I took out the basting stitches at the bottom just to give you a visual. All right, so this shows us there's our um, main fabric basting stitch and our batting. Can you see this? That's the end of our batting right there. There's our one quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so I'm just gonna push this back in here so you can see. And I'm gonna put my foot down and look at that. So we've got it right on the end of our uh, batting line. And our first stitch, I don't know if I can show you this, our first stitch is gonna be a placement stitch. And again, that's for if we didn't do our quilting, but we can go ahead and do that just to make sure that we've got everything lined up just right. Um, the second stitch is a um, basting stitch around the whole block. You don't need to do that because we already have it for our quilting. So you can bypass that step. Um, but anyway, so you want it at the end of your batting and preferably not in your seam allowance. So how easy is that to figure out how to how where your actual guide is? All right. Does that make sense? I think we're all good to go.